abusive relationship. I was beaten with bare hands and hairbrushes. I was slapped and my head was banged up against walls. I was drugged, sleep deprived, and food denied. I was told that I was disgusting and fat and ugly. I remember one conversation in particular that seemed to happen quite often, where I would stand there and be picked apart. My eyes were too far apart, my nose was too big, my cheeks were too fat, my tits were too small, and my ass was too big. And I better slap some makeup on my face and make myself presentable. I was lucky that I was even going out that night. I was abused, physically, verbally, and emotionally. I found myself on the bathroom floor of my apartment, hugging the toilet, puking my guts out. My partner was on the phone, crying, anxious, not knowing how to handle the situation, talking to my best friend, not knowing which hospital to go to. I was just laying there, oblivious to the seriousness of the situation. Earlier that day, I was working in a local cafe, and on this particular shift, I was in the kitchen, which meant I was surrounded by food. And I'm not sure if there was a trigger that day or a day from a lot. But I had extreme hatred and a feeling of out of controlness going through my body. So I did what I knew how to do best, and that was eat. And so I'd start by trying to keep things in control, and I would make myself a sandwich, maybe a little extra bread, cheese, sandwich meat, to try to push down those feelings. But it didn't work. And the feelings kept growing, and the out of controlness kept getting larger and larger. So I start reaching in the, reaching in the fridge grabbing meat and lettuce and cheese and just shoving it in my house, trying to make it go away. Nothing was working. So then I'd be baking and I'd be licking the batter, licking the bowl, licking the spoon, just pushing it down, just pushing everything down, and nothing was working. By the end of the shift, I was eating out of big vats of butter with the spoon and just shoving them in my mouth, trying to take this pain away. My belly was expanding from the food and the pain. And I did what I only thought I could do to cope. And I reached in the medical cabinet, grabbed the extra large bottle of Tylenol, took the pills, dumped them in my hand, threw them in my mouth, and chased them with water. Took a deep breath, and for a few seconds, I felt calmness. I don't really remember much from this point on, other than being on the bathroom floor. Mandy had arrived, and we went to the hospital. Nothing really came out of this hospital visit. I was lectured by a paramedic, examined by a resident psychiatrist, and let go the next day. It wasn't until the second time that I attempted suicide that I began to wake up. I remember a pivotal moment when I realized that I was in this abusive relationship. I was on my yoga mat and in my yoga teacher training course, and I was reaching forward to touch my toes in a forward bend. And I couldn't reach very far as pain was shooting out the backs of my legs and into my hips. And tears of pain were rolling down my face. And I looked around at all the other teachers in the class and saw that they could bend down and touch their toes. And I kept thinking, how can I be a yoga teacher if I can't even touch my toes? And this thought only made me want to reach farther through the pain. And the pain continued to move up through my legs, into my hips. And it was at that moment where I realized that this pain was very familiar. It was self-inflicted pain. And that's when I realized that I was in an abusive relationship, but that I was my own abuser. My body began to go numb. It couldn't take the pain, the anger, the hate, the discipline, and the regime anymore. I'd wake up every morning, probably around 5.30, and I would go right to the gym, and I would try to do a good hour and a half, two hour workout, 90 to 95% of it, which was cardio, because I loved sweating. I loved feeling the sweat. I loved feeling my muscles burn. I loved feeling my heart race. It made me feel in control. It made me feel complete. So then I would go on with my day, and at this point I was playing varsity hockey, and so I would have hockey practice every night. But I just didn't go to hockey practice. I would run to hockey practice and I would practice for an hour, an hour and a half, and I would run home. I would run home exhausted and depleted. But I needed that. I needed to start my day with exercise and end my day with exercise. To feel in control it was the only thing that worked. So I finished hockey, and I tried to keep up this discipline and this regime, and I started long distance running. But my body started shouting back. And I would be in these runs at the 
very early on in the kilometers, and my leg was starting to go numb, my right leg, and I literally could not feel my right foot hit the ground, and I would have tears pouring down my face, trying to push through the pain, and my mind would be yelling at me, Lindsay, you need to do this. Do you want to have that glass of wine tonight? Do you want to have that piece of cake? Remember when you screwed up yesterday? Get it together. Push through. And my body just kept screaming back more and more, telling me to stop. I remember when the abuse started. It was around junior high. Grade 7 was the first time that I starved myself because I thought I looked fat. And then I also remember getting ready to go out or to go to school and doing my hair. I had bangs at the time and they had to be just perfect. And if they weren't perfect, I would start to obsess. And then I'd wash them, blow dry them, do them again, and repeat this cycle over and over again. To the point where I would get so frustrated and filled with rage. And then I would get so frustrated that I would just start hitting myself with my hand, and my hairbrush, scratching my face, hitting my face, and banging my head up against the wall. And then I would look at myself in the mirror and see my face red and swollen and puffy and scratched, and I would just hate myself even more. I don't know how it happened, but peanut butter became my go-to binge food. Whenever I felt slightly out of control, I would go to the cupboard, and it was like I'd open the cupboard, and the peanut butter was screaming my name. Take me, take me, I'll make it better. So I'd open the peanut butter, and I'd be like, okay, just two little scoops with my fingers, and everything will be okay. Feel in control and you'll be able to go on with your day. So I'd start with the two spoons. I'm like, Lindsay, this is rather barbaric. Come on, get it together. Okay, if I get a spoon, everything will be okay. So I'd go and grab the spoon, just two scoops. That'll make the anxiety, the disgust, everything just calm down just a little. So I'd start with the spoon, and again, thoughts come up. What are you doing? Don't you have any control here? What's wrong with you? And the hatred would start building. And so I'd be like, I need something healthy. Carrots. Carrots are really healthy. That'll make everything okay. So I'd reach in the fridge and I'd grab the carrots. But I just didn't eat the carrots. I would take the carrots and dip them in the peanut butter. And I would start shoving them in my mouth. I wasn't tasting them. I was just trying to make the pain go away. And I would keep going and going and finally I'd be like, fuck, I've let it all go to shit now. May as well keep going. So I'd open the fridge, I'd take the yogurt, mix the yogurt with the peanut butter, take the crackers, take the cheese, the cookies, anything. Halloween was the best because the little chocolate bars, I could take them, dip them in the peanut butter and just jam them in my mouth, trying to push down every feeling I had because it was the only way I knew how to get through the day. My body kept trying to tell me that it was suffering and I kept telling it to shut up. I remember one time when I was doing my PhD and I started sleeping a lot less and drinking a lot more coffee. There just wasn't enough time to get everything done. My heart was racing and pounding all the time, and I just felt so anxious inside. My body was screaming at me for rest and sleep. It was so afraid of dying, it was shaking inside. It was so afraid that it couldn't keep up to anything under these circumstances. But instead of listening to it, I told it to shut up and I fed it anxiety drugs. And in the other period of my life, I was running a lot, training for hockey and ultimate, and my body couldn't keep up. But I was yelling at it to go faster and longer and more often. I was in so much pain that I could barely sit and hardly even walk. Again, my body was trying to tell me that it needed to slow down. But again, I didn't listen. I told it to shut up by feeding it painkillers. At first, it was just ibuprofen, often, for a long time, and then Vioxx, the drug that was later taken off the market because it caused heart attacks. I loved my obsessive exercising, my restricting what I ate. I needed to feel complete. I needed to feel in control. They were my drug. I didn't like anything else in my life. I didn't think I was a good enough partner. I didn't think I was smart enough. I didn't think I was a good enough athlete. I didn't like my sexuality. I didn't like how I was with my friends. Nothing seemed to work, and so all I knew how to cope with this was to keep exercising and restricting my food. It was my control. I had to be disciplined because my body had become my identity. 
I lost sense of my body. I remember not even being able to recognize myself in photos. This started to happen quite often, and one time in particular, I was tagged in a photo on Facebook. And I went to the photo and looked at it and stared at it for about a minute. There were only three people in the picture, but I couldn't see myself. And then eventually I saw that I was the one right there in the middle in a thin, muscular body. At first I was upset that I no longer looked like that. And then I realized that that was the summer of pain. The summer when my body was trying to speak to me and I told it to shut up. It was a body that I didn't even know. I remember having a moment, who am I? Who is this Lindsay White character? And what does she want? I was fortunate enough to wake up one moment on my yoga mat and realize that I was in this abusive relationship. There are no shelters for this kind of abuse and no way of escaping it. We've been given these bodies to do with what we can in this life. To hate, to torture, to scorn, or to love and nurture and enjoy. And here we are with body monologues. We're not really sure how to explain it or exactly what each of them are. You'll have to experience it for yourself. Welcome to body monologues. 